is, in lots of words, the skeleton of a conclusion. So if you're looking at the diagram right here, first of all, you have to make a claim. So you have to describe the system, the relationship, and the pattern between the variables. I'll give you an example in a minute, right? Then you're going to describe your evidence. What's your evidence for your claim? And then you must write out your mathematical model, not just an equation, but also explaining it. There's a description of what the constant is. C. So if you have a C value, like we talked about in Desmos in the previous video, what's the meaning of that variable, all right, and, uh, and what that represents in the real world. And also you have to restate, restate the mathematical model in words, not just written out as a mathematical equation. And then, of course, what's one indicator, indicator, whatever we're going to be for, of a scientific model that works is that you can predict what that prediction is. And then you can justify it, so explain your thinking of your confidence in using your data to predict future events when you have a sort of a new and model system. And then to add this last piece, which is a research extension question. So you want to add that as well. What could you do that's different? So let, let's take a little example. We've all now done the pendulum lab, and I want us to walk ourselves through this. So the claim here would be, this is the first part, I've got it color coded. After investigating the behavior of a pendulum, I claim there is a horizontal line relationship between the time of one swing and the starting angle of the pendulum. Remember, because it, regardless of the angle, it didn't change the, um, the period of the pendulum. All right, my evidence to the claim is that all of my data points of a broad range of angles line up on a horizontal line, right? When we drew the graph, or Desmos drew the graph, it was like that, right? The system of the pendulum swing can be mathematically modeled as, so now we're in the mathematical description, as time of one swing is 2.3 seconds. Now you might want to write it out. It, 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 in this case, it's just like y equals 2.3, or whatever the number was from your swing, where 2.3 represents 2.3 seconds it took the pendulum to complete one swing. So you can see how it's happening, or it's being written out in words. That's what we talked about in just a minute ago, right? And etc. you can read the rest of that. And the time of one swing equals the same for all angles. That's really the mathematical expression in words. So the next one here is using this model, I predict the prediction that at starting at an angle of 60 degrees, the pendulum will take 2.3 seconds. I could have done that. Now, if it was a different kind of a relationship, if you would say at 60 degrees, it's going to be some other number. And then the last thing you want to do is you want to predict or you want to have a research extension. And this is just one. There's no right answer on this one is how does the mass of the pendulum affect the time of one swing? So what if you would change the mass? That could be an extension that you can do. So this is an exemplary, exemplary? <laughs> a super awesome conclusion. See the different parts of a conclusion that you want to have in all your conclusions. So as you go forward, we're going to investigate lots of different models. I want you to use this pattern to write out your conclusions. I'll be grading these carefully. Uh, because it's important to really understand and be thinking like a scientist. Houston.